going on, guys? So I just enabled a uh, a new feature. Not not totally sure how it's going to work, but it's uh, called face mask. So apparently, you guys can now, if you donate or whatever, you can put like stuff on the webcam. I don't know how it works exactly, but we'll see. Uh, looks like my computer's lagging up a bit. We'll see how that works. Doobie doobie do. What is going on here? All right. Good morning. I'm going to get a uh, study session going here. Also, I think um, by this evening, we should have fairly regular uh, 60 No Limit and 40 No Limit games going. That's my prediction slash hope. Um, I've got a couple new players that have donated, or not donated, <laughs> that have deposited. Let's start with D. Uh, that have deposited. So I'm expecting, um, you know, some action on the 40 no limit and 60 no limit tables and uh yeah i may end up you know actually just starting 40 and 60 like four of each or two of each you know 40 no limit and 60 no limit tables to get going and uh you know seeing how that goes um i did leave up a hold a manager this is my session yesterday on the apps not bad mostly you know 60 no limit and 100 no limit um yeah, uh, I decided not to stream while I played yesterday and, you know, not to be results oriented, but it seems to have, you know, gone fairly well. So for now, I'm, uh, you know, I'm pretty happy with that. Let me uh, go to my dashboard and let's um, add in some tags here for the stream. So we are um, Texas Hold'em. Um, let's, where's educated? No limit, cash game, and educational. Bam. Can we do any more, or is that it? Um, competitive. There we go. Update that info. All right. So let's, I guess, get started here. So yeah, I, um, I'm sort of revamping things in the, in the, the server a little bit, but uh, basically, you know, I'm I'm trying to create some live club game messaging systems so that we can get the games going. Again, if you guys join the Discord server, that'll help. But yeah, I am looking at getting, um, you know, these games up and running. And it'll be a little easier if I'm not streaming, actually, because then I can play like three or four tables once we get the games, you know, going, which will help them run. And then... Uh, like I said, you know, I put out my last YouTube video, and if you guys saw that, it was about hiring a few prop players for the club just to uh, help, you know, in the initial, you know, first months. I've also looked into hiring a couple agents to go out and um, recruit players for the club. So hopefully the combination of all these things uh, gets us some some new players. And again, the the real key is that, you know, on my club... Um, just simply because of the VPIP requirement, it's going to be slightly more casual, right? There's not, not every player wants to play 30% of their hands in six max. And, uh, to give you an idea, I actually built, I pulled up what I believe is a decent, um, let me see if I can find it here. I'll, I'll pull it up and show it to you guys. It's not quite as detailed as I want, wanted, but I gave a general idea of how you can get, um, 30% VPIP. So let me let me go ahead and pull that. I have this like preflop documents. Um, let me pull this over here. Let's see. 
Not sure exactly what all of these charts are. Some of these were actually um, when I was in the early developmental stages of Simple Preflop Viewer. I'll actually show you guys this. This is uh, yeah, this is when I was first showing the developer how I wanted Simple Preflop Viewer to work. And so I like put this whole thing together about exactly how the ranges work and you know how the RNG would work with a, a PO solver grid view and then what I wanted the result to look like. So if you guys have used Simple Preflop Viewer, this is how I built this thing. So I said, hey, if I have this as an opening range and I get this percentage, these hands would show up. If I have this as a full range and I get this percentage, this would show up based on this percentage of the RNG. Anyway, kind of interesting. So when I first developed this thing, I actually made these uh, these like percentage-based like preflop. Rant. Anyway, I digress. So let's see here. Somewhere in here. Okay, so I started making this. This should get you six max. Uh, this should get you 30% VPIP. So you'll see under the gun is like 20%. We're opening a bunch of suited connectors, all our pocket pairs, all our suited aces, down to like King Jack and Ace 10. Um, then we go to 25%, uh, 30% in the cutoff. The button's at like 70%. Now, what I will do probably is I'm going to go in here and I want to change. See if I can zoom in a little bit here. View. Zoom. Like 150%. So if I go in and uh, look at the button range, what I would probably do is change, um, add some more colors. So we could take something like, you know, all right, so what we could do is say, okay, these, you know, these are all, we could put like, might be a little bit dark, but anyway, you get the idea. So we could grab all this down to like queen five, down to jack seven, down to ten seven, down to king five, do, do, do all these. And we could make all of the, well, I don't actually know if this is going to be right, but so let's say we made this all like we could say okay these are the the raising hands and then we could take like a bunch of these outer ones right and we could say like down to fives and eh, these probably not All right, we could change these to a slightly lighter color, right? Something like that. Oops, not these. These are dark. Okay, so we could say like these are these are opens, um, and then we could say um, like if there's limpers, we raise these, but we limp these behind, and then we could also make another color for a calling range. So we could basically make this chart on the button have like. Like three or four ranges, right? We could have a we could have hands that you three bet. So we could say, look, these should be, you know, three bets. We don't even need to do it like verse different positions. We could just call like, hey, you know, these are hands that you should three bet. Um and then you know, so three bet hands could be like orange, right? Those are our three bet hands. Uh yeah, I mean we could probably three bet a couple more. Oops, not that. Okay. All right, so three bet those hands, and then we would call a raise with all of these dark green hands. Um, anything that's dark green or orange, we would ISO with, and then anything that is this light color, we would limp behind or um call a raise and then if it's unopened we open anything that's even light green something something along those lines you get the idea the point is is that uh i'm going to sort of build this out um we can also alter the small blind so it's a little more reasonable not just like 100 percent of hands but 
you know, something sort of, sort of like this. Uh, and I'll clean this up, but I'll provide this on the Discord server um, in the PP Poker section so that you guys have an idea of like what it looks like to play a 30% VPIP range that's, you know, reasonable. And I'll make sure that this, this gets you pretty darn close to 30% or higher. Um, that way, you know that you're playing loose enough to basically qualify to play on these clubs. So that's the, uh, that's the general idea. Good news. I, um, I think I've got somebody that wants to rent my house for like multiple years. Like they, they don't want to move again for like three or four years. So I might have a renter that's going to be there for like a long time, which is awesome because that's obviously like best case, you know, that's like best case is somebody rents it long term and I can, you know, actually just not have to worry about it and have it rented out. Pretty good deal. Okay. So this is a general gist of, uh, of this preflop chart, and then I can put some color codes in here as well um, to show what they all mean. Do, 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 view. Um, so yeah, anyway, we'll get, a, uh, we'll get a nice little, you know, I can have a, I'll basically create uh, this chart, but I'll have it, you know, each of these boxes will have three ranges. It'll have call, three bet, um, and open raise. So the you know one color will be the raise first in, the other will be the call or limp behind, and the other will be raise. So that you guys have a pretty good idea of um, what ranges you need to play to get the right uh, preflop frequencies. Because again, it's a lot more fun to play more hands, right? A club that you play more hands uh, in is going to just be more fun. Okay. We'll put this guy back over here and uh yeah unless there's any you know any questions right away before we get started on the stream i will get our study session going so we're going to be using a simple uh simple gto trainer and um let me think here if there's anything else yeah, so the uh, I'm going to have scheduled blocks of uh, cash games. At first, I was going to do four-hour blocks, but I realized that's kind of intense, especially if people are playing three or four tables. Um, so I'm going to do two-hour blocks, and uh, those will be every day at um, you know, 10 a.m., 2 p.m., 6 p.m., and 8 p.m. And so those will be sort of scheduled times where I intend to have games start. And uh, therefore, if you are interested in playing, you know, jump on the Discord server and ask about, you know, hey, is anybody going to be around for the, you know, is anyone going to be around for the, the 10 a.m. game? Is anybody going to be around for the 2 p.m. game? And then you have a basic idea of, you know, what, uh, you know, that people will be around. And I can also put, like, if a game definitely will run, because I've had people tell me that they'll be there, then I'll, I'll mention that on the Discord server. And I can also add you guys to like a group chat and then send you a message when a game is going, you know, like, Hey, there's, there's two players on this, on this table at this stake, if you're interested in playing. And as I get more and more players, I can divide those up by the stake level. So if you're a 40, no limit player and you're like, Hey, I just want to know when 40, no limit games are like running, then I'll call that like the 40, no limit group. And I'll just send a message out to everybody. That's a 40, no limit player, um, in the discord and give them that information. Hope that all makes sense. So yeah, I can do that by either assigning you a role in the Discord server or creating like a, a group chat either way. Um, and then I can just, you know, in the, in the general members area or the general um, PP Poker members area. In fact, we should add a, a general. in the pp poker member area and the at well actually pp poker games will go in there eventually so all right anyway hope that all makes sense we are live today we're going to be doing some studying um again you know not to be results oriented but this is a pretty good system so far right we do our study session we um focus up then we grind some poker and uh hopefully we can have another you know nice winning day Today I'm going to start with big blind versus cutoff. That's going to be slightly more challenging than versus MP. 
we can see um, this last time we played 50 hands, we got a minus 13, whereas versus MP, we're, you know, 8, 9, 7, stuff like that. So we'll try a big blind versus cutoff and see how that goes. Let's, uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's get going. And again, I think if you guys try, I don't know if anybody's up for it, but if, you, if you're interested and you want to try doing a small donation, I think you can put little fun things on the webcam now. So, you know, check that out. Also, be aware if you want, you can... Um, during the... Whoops. During the streams... You can use uh, donations to deposit onto the club. So if like that's the easiest way for you to deposit, if I'm streaming and you want to um, add some money to your to your account on U Rounders Club, you can do that using a stream donation just to you know keep things nice and easy. Hopefully that again just makes it more accessible for people to deposit and play. All right, let's cover that up so we're not talking about it nonstop. Do, 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 do. I guess we could can we shrink this? No, let's um maybe we can move this up a little bit. Yeah, that looks kinda kinda dumb. Yeah. I mean there's a scrolling thing there, so you guys want to sign up, you know how to do it. Okay, so this situation, we are in the big blind. We are facing a continuation bet from the button. Uh, the button's range looks like this, probably about 45% of hands. Our range looks like this. And how do we play it? So it'll be a little, we'll be playing a little bit looser than when we defend against the middle position player. So we know versus MP, we don't have to defend three card straights and three card flushes. Here though, we have a, we don't have a gutter. We just have a weird, some weird backdoor draws with an ace. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fold, and we'll see if this is. Uh... Okay, so we do have enough equity here. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I mean we have like some weird running backdoor draws, but we also have like overcards, blockers. All right, so this is a situation where I believe versus MP, we would be pretty close to okay folding here, um, but it's a mixed strategy versus the cutoff. Uh, let's see. Let's try to sit up a little. Actually, I probably should be like standing when I do this. Um, I think standing is better for like memory. So, la 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 la. Yeah, fold. Um, obviously we are at least defending. So with a gutter here, we want to raise about 35%. Okay, 35% raising frequency. Ooh, I feel a little like sick to my stomach. I haven't really eaten any breakfast yet. I probably should do that. Oh. <sighs> sort of happens if I like take all my like my uh if I take all my supplements but I don't have anything to eat, I always my stomach always feels gross. Again, um, there might be some raising here. No, nope. call. Mm. Gutter. It's a pretty bad gutter, though. I'm going to fold it. Look at that. Nice fold. Mm. 
gutter, but my yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we do. We just we just raise gutters. So I always put in like a thirty percent raise with our gut shots, and we'll see how that goes. This again. This is like a really weak gutter. I don't think we need to defend this. Yeah, I don't. That's fine. Eights, we do need to defend. Queen eight, we can fold. Six eight, we need to defend. Okay. Yeah, this bottom pair just uh, it does like to put in a raise once in a while. Again, this is one of those you know some of it's for protection, some of it is for. It, it's just it's generally when we have so six seven what eight nine I guess no. So not. Like a nine, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So running, yeah. I mean, I guess like a backdoor gutter. So any like backdoor gutter plus bottom pair seems to be a raise. Even just bottom pair sometimes likes to raise for protection. So we should keep that in mind here. Um, yeah, it's definitely close. We'll see what it says. Yeah, it's a fold. This is a gutter with ace high, so, you know, it's a call. I'm going to put, like, 21% raise in. So we don't raise as often with this gutter. I think because of the ace, we have the overcard, so it's going to be a little stronger. Here, we should probably call. Mm, four, six, so same thing, although... Four, five, six, seven, eight. I guess we technically have some back doors. Um, so again, I'm gonna call and like raise, I don't know, 20%. Pretty good. Uh, fold. Five, six, seven, eight. I mean, it's a gutter. I don't think we raise this. This is open ended, but it seems like a really. Oh, wow, it really wants us to it actually wants us to raise the weak end of the open ended straight more often. So this could have a lot to do with the opponent range more than our exact hand um because we we just hit this. So if we look at if we look at our range, we actually hit that board really hard and our opponent just does not hit that board as hard as us. So we're going to be raising really often on that um on the you know, 876 board we crush it and our opponent just does not hit it as well as we do. Makes sense. Call. Call. Uh, here we have middle pair, so I don't think we'll be raising as often. Just calling. Ace nine, not enough. Ace jack. Uh, we have a gutter and two over cards, so there'll probably be some sort of, you know, some sort of raising. Okay, so. Do we not have a gutter? Seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, we have a gutter. Wow. Weird that it's actually folding this sometimes. Um. Um, this is a simple GTO trainer. It's made by Simple Post Flop, and uh, you can get a, tri a free trial using that link and also a 10% discount if you decide to buy it. So I haven't used Sit and Go Wizard, but it is um, might be like Sit and Go Wizard. I'm not. I'm not really too sure. Okay, so that's a raise. Pocket nines will be a call, although it might be close, actually. Yeah, I actually can sometimes even fold nines here. Fives will also be kind of close, but probably a call. Uh, gutter, backdoor flush draw, and overcards. Um, I'm guessing we should raise this. Some frequency. Bam, nailed it. Well, 10% nah, off, but still pretty close. Three, four, this will just be a call. We usually don't raise um, weak flush draws. Um, you can see, I mean, 10%, sure, but we're not losing any EV by just always calling here. Uh, yeah, I don't think this is enough to call, but we could be wrong. All right, so call, fold, raise. 
So we can just I mean, yes, this is a pretty this is a pretty good hand to check raise just in general as an exploitative line, but apparently we can not only be exploitative, but also right, like I've talked about this before where there's a spot in which the pool overfolds, but you know, in addition to the pool overfolding, it's also theoretically correct to do occasionally. So those are spots where we want to actually shift our, our strategy to a full exploitative play by always raising here um, because the pool is overfolding. So this is a pretty good spot to pick up, you know, the 9-3-3 nine, nine, the nine, three, three with overcards. We can just exploitatively raise all of these. And again, like I, I keep saying exploitatively, but it's actually not even outside of, of theory um, to do so. La la la. So same thing here. I mean, middle pair. I don't think we raise. I think we just call. Ah, we do. I mean, it really does. Like these small pairs with backdoor draws, it really does like raising. So I just got to get used to that. Top two. Sounds like a call. Oh wow, seventy percent re-raise. Okay. I guess top of the range. We just we just need to raise it. Fair enough. Yeah, this is all backdoor draws. Just gonna fold it. It looks pretty strong, but I don't think it needs to be defended. Uh, middle pair plus a draw again. So let's let's try thirty four percent. Nailed it. And fold. Call. Mm hmm hmm hmm. Gutter plus overcards plus backdoor flush draw. Okay, even higher. We want like fifty, almost fifty-fifty here, but pretty, pretty good. King three. Um, there's no backdoor draws here, so I'm guessing if we do raise, it's like really small frequency. Okay, even smaller than that. Basically, we need some sort of backdoor drop to be raising with this bottom pair. Uh, and the king's not quite enough, so that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But again, every day we kind of get better at this stuff. Um, this is really dry. Let me see what the... I'm going to cheat a little bit. What was the two-pair hand? That was on a wet, a more wet board with two, with two hearts. And this one is pretty dry. I mean, I'm sure it's a mixed strategy. Let's go with that. Oops. Oh, wow. I can't believe we're losing this much EV by playing a mixed strategy pure. It's 33. It's not even that. Like, it's not. I'm surprised we're losing this much EV. Oh, sorry. It's a. No, we played a pure strategy mix. So we want to raise 100% here with sets. Okay. Fair enough. Top, again, top of range, just raise. Uh, you can kind of hear me like trying to come up with heuristics that I can use on future, um, you know, future hands where I can use the like a something that I've learned here during the drill as a heuristic for the you know a future hand that I haven't. Um, that way I can, you know, continue to try to improve and play better. Um, this is close. I'm just gonna fold this one. Yeah, okay, it doesn't it actually wants a raise. Okay, small pair, dry board, raise. All right. Raise here sometimes, okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. Really likes a raise. This has to have something to do with like runner runner equity. I, I mean, I would imagine that there's something, there's some combination of things that could happen where we end up getting a lot of value when we hit a runner runner hand against his top pair. And then we also get a lot of value by him folding his weaker than top pair hands. So it must just be sort of like this thing where we have the potential to like our EV is just really high in this spot in certain runouts and, and therefore setting that up by raising the flop is just better. That's my guess. All right. 
Not too bad. Let's see here. We had, what were our biggest errors? Nothing too big. This 1.1. 1 .1. Yeah, so raise sets, raise, you know, raise the top of the range. Fair enough. And, I mean, that's really the, the only really big. So that was a pretty good session, actually, versus uh, cutoff. 3.5 BB per 100 loss. Um, yeah, I would say that we're continuing to improve in those areas. All right, let's look at... So we played 25 hands yesterday. We got a very low um, error rate on the... But let's play the button this time. Let's see how we do in position. Button versus big blind and single raise pots. See how this goes. So this will be a drill. We will play the entire... Whoa! What? Want to buy one-on-one -on -one coaching and 3% equity in MTT caches. <laughs> Never too much LPT bacon. Well, hey, man, thanks for the coaching, bits. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, as far as one-on-one -on -one coaching, I'm not actually doing that much one-on-one -on -one coaching right now. Um, join, you know, you can join the Discord server and hit me up on there and, uh, you know, talk to me about it. Uh, and also, I don't actually play that many MTTs. So uh, when I do, I'm, you know, I'm perfectly happy to sell a little bit of action and MTTs, but these are, uh, these are cash games that I play mostly. But again, thank you for the bits and welcome to the stream. Glad you're enjoying it. All right, so I'm going to play in position. I'm going to lock to in position here because I'm going to be the preflop uh, raiser on the button. And we'll just play this first hand out of position because we don't get to choose. Go check, check. Um, I'm just going to fold. All right, well, I wanted a call. Um, all right, so now we're going to... So this is a kind of an interesting drill for me because I use one-third on the flop typically. However, I actually do know, or I believe, there's a decent amount of equity to be gained by using multiple bet sizes. Now, on the flop, you're not going to, uh, um, you know, get, get that much. All right, man, no problem. Uh, well, uh, And welcome to the Discord. I assume that's you who just joined. Never too much bacon. Welcome, welcome. So yeah, there will be more content coming to the Discord as you know as it continues to grow. I mean, I think we've got over a hundred members in the Discord now, and um, yeah, once people sign up and everything and get into the members area, then I'll start you know putting a lot more uh, content. Uh, one of the cool things that you can do is you can actually that save. Was intense. Um, Hey, thank you for that sub, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> so you can actually save solutions in simple uh, in simple GTO. Why why am I not getting any sound? Damn, man. Thank you for the bits. Thank you. Killing it with the uh, bit donations. Appreciate it. Setting a good example for the rest of the viewers. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Yeah, killing it on the bits front. <sighs> but, yeah, I mean, yeah, what, now that you're in the Discord, you know, hit me up and uh, in the future we can talk about maybe some one on one coaching. Because I am, I mean, I have done coaching in the past, but it's just. I haven't been able to have it like as consistent as I'd like. I basically have students come and go and they, you know, they stay for a little while and then, um, yeah, it just never really stays as like a consistent thing. What I'd really like is to do like a weekly, 
you know, just a weekly two hour group coaching call with like four or five students and have that be like a regular thing every week and charge, you know, a reasonable amount for it, but have it so that everybody's getting a lot out of it. And it's just hard to get that many students that are willing to, you know, be there consistently. And not only that, that just, you know, can all be somewhere at the same time. But anyway, welcome to the stream. Hopefully I, uh, I see you around more, never too much bacon. So anyway, back to my, my strategy. So I do believe there is equity to be made by having more um, bet sizes on the flop, but one third seems to work pretty well. It doesn't lose all that much equity in general, but I do think there might be something to be said for almost, I was talking to uh, you know my friend Jeremiah about this the other day, and I thought like, one thing I don't love about using one third is because like Nick Howard's like stuff is out there so much now and it basically everybody sort of knows about the one third strategy it sort of it sort of indicates to every other player at the table that you're somewhat competent like you at least know enough to know that this is a viable strategy you've either seen some coaching videos or you've done something like it just tells everyone like oh this is probably a guy that sort of kind of knows what he's doing it's very hard to measure the amount of equity that loses or gains you in some way. So I, I don't have the answer to this. It's just sort of a, a, you know, almost like a thought experiment. But I do wonder if altering your play so slightly, but not losing any EV from it, would keep your image in a better place. So basically, like, doing things like not using, you know, 1.25 preflop or not or like not using 2.5x preflop, right? Guys who use 2.5x preflop are typically regs. They typically have watched some videos. They typically have learned something about poker that has told them you should 2.5x at preflop. How much equity do you gain by 2.5xing at preflop? I don't know. It's incredibly difficult to prove other than running you know a solver for 2.5x and then running it for 3x and comparing the difference in which you'll probably find it's almost negligible poker snowy prefers pot on the button it prefers a small bet in early position and it prefers a larger bet in late position does that mean that that's the highest ev play well it depends if you think well my my opponents overfold in the blinds so i should use a smaller bet then it doesn't work if your opponents are calling more often in the blinds, then having a bigger pot to play in position probably does make sense. Um, so it's something people go back and forth about a lot. And I guess, you know, the only way to do it, to really figure it out, would be to take, you know, either similar skilled players or the same player and test out, you know, a million hands of raising 2.5x and then a million hands of raising uh, 3x and compare the difference. Well, nobody really has that much time, and honestly, over a million hands, your skill level changes. So it's just basically, as far as I can tell right now, impossible to um, prove one way or the other that one's better. However, 3x looks less reggy than 2.5x. So I use 3x because it, lo it makes me look like less of a reg, and I think there's value in that. The same can be said for this half pot or one third on the, pot, uh, on the flop. Now, again, you'd have to learn a much better strategy for using half pot, and you'd have to have a checkback range, so it complicates the game tree a lot. Um, but again, it's just one of those things where I'm not exactly sure how it works. The other thing you could do is have 100% range, but break it up between half pot bets and one-third pot bets, or one-third and two-thirds, right? Like most players don't, to, like most regs are not using two-thirds on the flop all that often. I mean, some of them still do. But uh, they probably aren't doing it with a 100% range. So anyway, the point is, is that you can vary your play in very, very small ways as long as you learn how to do it correctly without losing much EV. And if it sort of disguises you from being identified as like a good, strong, you know, well, well studied reg, there may be value in that. It's just something I've been thinking about lately because, um, yeah, I don't really love the idea of just like being able to, you know, sitting down, playing this one third strategy and immediately having somebody be able to pick out this guy's betting one third, a hundred percent on the flop. So now I know that I can exploitatively check raise him or, you know, do X, Y, Z to counter that. 
uh, it might just be better to sort of be a little bit more disguised and not have people identify as quickly whether or not you know what you're doing, you know, to occasionally, again, this weird thing where, like, what if you occasionally threw in, like, a limp on the button or, you know, you occasionally use a weird preflop sizing that makes you look not like a reg? Does that get you more EV in spots where, like, are you giving up a very, very small amount of EV or no EV to gain, you know, a loose call later on or to gain a tight fold later on um, if people don't think you're capable of something? So anyway, that's my that's my general thought on some of these things and curious to hear what, you know, what you guys actually think of any of that or if it's just sort of nonsense and I should just shut up and color. Anyway, uh, I don't think this is a spot where we need to bet, but it is. Okay, so overcards is a call. And, I mean, we have top pair good kicker, so we should bet. I think we should have a smaller size than two-thirds or double pot, but we have what we have. And it wants us to check behind here with this. This is too too weak. Again, this is button versus big blind. I'm surprised that's too weak for that spot. Um, trip jacks, I don't know. In general, we will not lose a lot by betting 100%, even if we're using a half pot sizing. So, um, I would say when in doubt, just bet the flop. This ace, we can look like... This hits our range much better than it hits his range, so I honestly think we probably just barrel most of the aces on the turn. And that's true. 73% of the time we want to bet the ace. Once he calls on the ace high board, we block... I mean, we block um, queen jack, which had a gutter. We block the heart draw. Honestly, I just think we block too much, and if he does have like some sort of 6-7, we beat that anyway. So I don't know if it'll really want us to bet here with our, our king high, but I'm just going to check back. Yeah, so that's correct, right? So we want to actually go ahead and check this back. We have king high. That's the best. That's the nut no pair hand. And typically when you have like the nut no pair hand and there's some missed draws out there, it's just a check back. Um, again, we, we block a lot of the missed draws that he could have had, and we would have beat those missed draws on that last hand. Yeah, so this one's a 50-50. Again, we're not really losing much here. Um, the eight on the turn. I like to double barrel this because I think we get a lot of light calls on the paired board, but the you know the optimal opponent is not going to be as good. If this was an overcard, ace, king, queen, obviously two of those give us a hand, but 50-50 again. And unfortunately, we probably get called by ace high here. So I think it's just a check. Looks good. Mm, I mean, yeah, backdoor flush draw looks like we should bet 100%. Cool. Again, in position, it's, it's, it's actually kind of tough to lose that much equity. So that's why I usually don't even do these drills. And also, because I use a one-third sizing, it, it just doesn't... I normally don't even need to do this. Or worry about it. Uh, la, 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 la. Yeah, this is pretty bad for our range. Let me see if this might be a check back. It's still a mixed strategy, but it's, it's okay. I mean, I guess we basically have to bet here, right? Yeah. Playing in position is pretty easy once you once you figure it out or once you get used to it. So I will say that I mean I have found that this is the the best the best practice. Um, that I know of at, at this point. You know, there's actually another pretty cool looking um, software or site. I'll have to find it again. I'll have to find it again. But uh, it looks like basically similar training to this. I just, I don't know how they got their actual results. Oh, my stomach feels terrible still. 
<laughs> nice raise. Um, so yeah, it's like a, it's a, it's actually very similar to an idea that I've had about my training, you know, my website and training ideas and ideas that I've had for courses and such. Um, but again, I don't know how it's, it's solutions and everything are derived. So that's my only concern. I want to, uh, you know, probably contact them and ask them some questions about it and then, uh, give it a try. But it's basically just a training website, but it kind of uses stuff like this. I don't even, I honestly don't actually remember what, what the site's called, but, um, it's on my list of things to check out. Let's check back. This is a situation where we basically want to like check back and bluff catch. Um, yeah, I think it's, oh, okay. It does want us to bet the river here. Um, lose a little bit of EV, but not, not too much as far as river. EV losses go. So here we're getting this uh, nice little donk bet, which is very bizarre, right? This this is obviously hitting our range harder. So I'm guessing that he does this with, I don't know, sets of twos, random two pairs that he might have, and then some flush draws. Like that's probably what his range would be here is he, he wants to basically donk into our strong range with his strong hands and his strong draws. Okay. Um, he had 7-5 offsuit there and then some absolute air, apparently. Okay. Weird. <laughs> A little surprising. We'll try to get 25 hands. Again, of the, the regular training, we'll do 25 hand sets, and then of the drills, we'll do 50 hand sets. I think that's a pretty good, pretty good combo. Uh, this, it'll probably want us to check back. Again, when we use a smaller bet size, we can bet on the um, flop, but with this, we'll just check back. This will be a value bet, of course. So... Yeah, basically, we just kind of do this over and over again. I mean, we're top of range, so we probably want to bet 100%. We just do this training over and over again every day, and, uh, you know, very slowly. But, I mean, I, you know, I say very slowly, but honestly, I feel like I get better every time I do this stuff. Um, doing it consistently is more valuable than doing it once a week. And I think, honestly, doing it on a daily basis is incredibly valuable. To the point where, like, it might be something I should incorporate into my weekends. Like, I really, I probably just should do it every single day, right? If you're going to be a professional at something, then having, doing some practice of it every single day seems correct. This might be a bet on the river, yeah. 29, yeah, it's a mixed strategy. We took the higher, the higher frequency, which is fine with me. Mm, so this looks like a check back now that we hit a pair. Now we have two pairs, so we have value. Um, I don't, there's no reason to overbet. We want to, mm. I mean, we block hearts. So he, so here's a weird like advanced concept thing. We block the hearts, meaning he doesn't have very many flush draws. Meaning if we were going to bluff, it might, there may be some value in overbetting here. So to balance out our overbet bluffs, should we overbet a hand that isn't necessarily as strong as you would think because we might get called by a one pair hand that thinks we're bluffing some sort of missed straight draw or missed flush draw? Let's try it. No, the answer is no. Oh, he also, no, three, four, five. So he had, not, he had air, but we are not losing that much EV here. So I'm, I'll bet King Jack would be an overbet, maybe. Like, we just need to be slightly stronger. Or actually, you know what was, was probably even better is sets. Sets would make perfect overbets here because he can then have top pair. He can have top two. Um, so maybe he has to have, like, some other... I don't know, but he can have, like, Jack 3, Jack 5, Jack 4. I, maybe he raises those. Anyway, eh, I tried it. I was wrong. We'll learn and, and move on. That's the only thing I don't like about the, the built-in training is we can't pull up the grids and look at them. It would be really nice to be able to pull up simple post-flop and actually dig into these grids and find out what 
um, you know, how the how the grid is built, how it's all put together, and then how we should be playing. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess we'll check. I don't, it's close. Yeah, check. And now, so now he's doing the overbetting here uh, on a rainbow board, and I think we have a fold. Oh no, it wants us to call. It's a huge mistake. Yeah, I don't think our opponents are actually bluffing here as often enough. See, I mean, the problem is, is this makes perfect sense for his hand. So I'm always skeptical when I make the fold and they actually have it. I'm like, well, I mean, you're not showing me a bluff this time. Um, but apparently, I don't know. I Like, this just totally looks like a six, right? He called the flop. Six works. He checked the turn, intending to check raise, and now on the river, he's trying to like make his like, make up for lost value on the turn by overbetting. It's just I don't know. It screams six to me, and it is. But I get it, right? They're they're playing optimal. I'm a hundred percent okay with folding that in in game, though. Just just makes sense. Easy fold. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. I'm I'm missing some chat from YouTube because I don't I don't have it pulled up. Um also guys, be aware the YouTube streams are going to be ending soon. I'm not sure which day, but um I've only got the restream license going everywhere for a few more days and I'm not going to continue it. So if you guys are watching on Facebook, uh, definitely, you know, a subscribe to the YouTube channel, but also make sure you, um, you know, follow or subscribe on Twitch and, uh, you know, sign up in the discord so that, you know, when I'm live and you can check out the Twitch stream. Uh, again, I'm streaming every, every day, five days a week. It'll be from 9am to 10am approximately. I'm going to be streaming for an hour a day doing this study session every morning. Um, it usually goes long, but figure 9am to 10am every day. And uh, you can catch me on twitch.tv slash unexceptional rounder. So make sure you guys are following me there because soon the streams will not be going to YouTube or to Facebook. This is an open-ended straight. We can bet it. Um, so I can't read that. That Hold on. Let me see if I can open this. Hello. You fold. On training four bet part pots, yes, on stream, yeah, um, yeah, I actually have some four bet pot solutions built. Um, I'm just not using those right now, but yeah, I absolutely will be covering um, two bet pots, three bet pots, four bet pots. I will not do a whole lot of five bet pots because they're mostly pre flop, but um. Yeah, I absolutely will do four bet pots. I have four bet pot solutions built and I will, you know, I will do them. They, for the most part, they play very straightforward though because most players are not four betting light enough. So until I'm really consistently playing in like 400, 600 and 1K no limit games, they're, you know, there is value in studying them, but there will be more value in studying them when I get up to much higher limits where players have a more balanced four bet range. Right now, because players are four betting pretty unbalanced, you can play very straightforward against four bet ranges. So that's that's my thoughts on that. Mm -hmm -hmm. So the problem in this situation is that when our opponent's betting into us, um. Well, I guess it depends on the board, but anyway. This, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. This is probably some sort of mixed strategy. Yeah, 94% check, so pretty good check back. This will be a call. I mean, we've got an open ender plus, sorry, we've got a gutter plus a flush draw. And I think we just check back here because we can't afford to be check raised. Yep, that's correct. Okay, um, that's going to do it for that drill. So biggest errors were 
What did we do on this 9-10? Oh, we checked here with the 9 high flush, and we were supposed to bet. Uh, this is a big one. We folded, and we were supposed to call on this the, the jack, right? So yeah, we were supposed to call with this pair of jacks versus the overbet. Okay. Um, that, that was basically the biggest one, right? Folding a pair when we were beat. All right, and session. Um, so not bad. 11 BBs per 100 over 25 hands. Definitely not as good as the last time we ran this. Oh, but we were... So this is as in position, and this is as out of position. Um, so surprisingly, we actually had more of an error rate in position. Uh, yeah, so some work to do there, but again, I think... That's the first time we've done that one, as far as I recall. All right, so I will, here, I'll show you. In my custom games, I have, do I have four bet pots or not yet? Let me look here. Um, no, I don't, three bet, three bet, three bet. Yeah, I just have three bet pots right now. I have in the past built four bet pots, but I don't have any right now. Um, again, I just, I just, I found that when I put in the pool ranges for four bets, they, they, they just played so straightforward. It was like, if you have a hand call, if you don't fold. And, uh, I realized like, okay, well, it would be useful to train versus optimal ranges, but my pool isn't playing optimal ranges. So I just sort of was like, all right, well, I guess for right now, it's just not the highest priority, um, item to study. So when it, you know, when it becomes high priority again, I, I will do that. All right, did we do this yesterday? What is, what is 511? So that's 20, so, uh, oh, 11 is, what the hell is that? Oh, we deleted it yesterday because of the misclick. Okay, so let's do... Okay, let's do us as the three better using our thirty-three percent C bet, and uh, we'll 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 do the two three bet pots. We'll do us as the three better C betting thirty-three percent, and then we'll defend against a two-thirds C bet. That should be good enough. And we've got six minutes left, so we'll go a little bit long, but that's all right. Um, if you guys are interested in getting in on a ten a.m. game. Uh, let me know, and I can I can fire up some tables, and we can play together for um, a little while on U Rounders Club. So just let me know if you're interested in playing, and we can you know after the stream at the end of the stream we can jump on the tables and and get some games going. Okay, so we are the pre flop. So I see about 100 percent of my range. This is kind of an interesting one to check, uh, just because we crush it so hard. So we'll see. It still wants us to bet 93% of the time. And it wants us to check a raise. That's interesting. Um, yeah, it doesn't want us to do that. It wants us to just call. Okay, so now we're getting donk bet into. Uh, fold. What's this to call? It? Damn, this is for. Wait, what? Okay, okay. Out of position. <laughs> um. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. So now, all right. So we are the pre-flop. This is the point of confusion here. We are the pre-flop three better versus the button. We are on the big blind. And the cutoff is the opener, so not not versus the button, versus the cutoff. Okay, so we're three betting, we're c betting 100% of our range. Um, so yeah, we'll notice that there's very few flops. If I do identify a flop that I really think is a check, I'll go ahead and check it. Uh, I don't think there's any harm in just being like, look, this is the worst flop possible. We should check this one. But otherwise, we should just be betting almost 100%. So on the turn, I like that this gives us a few options. We can bet, you know, bigger two thirds. We can bet half pot, or we can go all in. I think this is fine. I do like to use a one third occasionally, 
Um, but uh, for this, I think we just want to go, I mean, two thirds or half pot is probably fine. Either one gets us all in by the river because 14 and 14 is 30. Then we'll have 60 and uh, we will only have uh, 60 behind. So we'll have a pot size bet on the river. Um, we block the heart. I don't know. Two thirds could be the right answer. Yeah, it only wants this 20% of the time, so I think it does want two-thirds pretty often as well. And then I think we just go with 28 here. Yeah, 28 is correct on the river. Uh, a larger bet on the turn was probably, um, was probably correct. So ace, three, nine. So this one it actually wants us to check 92% of the time. So yeah, monotone flop where we miss could be a good option for checking. And now we'll just, we'll check the turn once we get called. And um, while we rarely win here, I'm not sure that we should be uh, betting very often. If we were gonna bet, I'm guessing we would use like an over bet. Uh, so I'm just gonna give up. Okay, it wanted, yeah, it just wanted us to take like a half pot stab. You can see how these get a little complicated on the turn and river. Um, what's, what, I, I'm sorry, I can't, like, I'm, I can only see the Facebook, the YouTube chat, like, in the, the thing. Let me try to pull it up. Um, as preflop aggressor in four bet pots, you can 100% C bet on king high flop, but low wet flops are more complex, like 50% C bet and bigger size. And you have crazy range of hands that four bet bluff. You have a crazy range of hand. I'm not sure about that. Each of those hands wants to play differently. I'm not. I'm not sure what the what the crazy range of hands that four bet bluff are. Um, and also like most players are not actually using those four bet bluffs, like, although some will, they're, they're definitely not all using them. Hmm. Mm, mm, mm. But yeah, I, I use a 100% c-betting range in 4-bet pots and in 3-bet pots. So. That's that. If you have, you know, opponents who are using very aggressive 4-betting ranges, then that's all true. But again, if they're not, you know, if they're more, ah, I gotta stand So yeah, a low monotone board looks like one we can check. Mm, I don't want to bet on the turn. I don't know. But yeah, see, like this is the thing is <laughs> the the solver just never gives up, right? It's like it doesn't just give up out. It, like I I and other players just you know tend to be more passive, more. Willing to just be like, eh, probably not close enough. But realistically, like, I know that we probably shouldn't be giving up here, right? We're at the bottom of our range. We have no chance of winning. That means we should probably be firing a bluff. And uh, it's just sometimes hard to do that, even though you know it's correct. So this, these, these drills are very, very good practice for kind of just realizing, like, okay, like, I can't, I can't just... I can't just give up, you know, all the time because it's easier. Like I still have to stay aggressive and look for ways to take down the pot when I have the bottom of my range. So like these are spots where I think are, you know, more common checks where you have second pair. 
um, on the turn, obviously, but. Mixed, right? I mean, we can fold more often. So the double flush draw, it really wants us to... Uh, so last time we had a double flush draw, it wanted the larger size. This time, because there's only one flush draw and we block it, it wants a smaller size. Hey, giant war kitten. Welcome to Twitch. Right, right. I, yeah, so there are, but again, like small frequency hands don't, don't, I mean, yeah, like four or five suited typically calls against four bets, right? That's, there's, there's a lot of hands that, that, yeah, will, but again, a lot of players, I think, especially if players aren't using something like simple preflop viewer, uh, which you guys should check out if you haven't, but if people are not using something like simple preflop viewer, then they tend to just be like, oh yeah, I know I should sometimes like, four bet this light, but I'm not going to do it this time. I think a lot of players end up in that spot. Whereas if you actually use a, you know, something like simple preflop viewer, uh, dot com, then you can know that like, oh, this is the 4% or 5% frequency that I'm supposed to, you know, do this with 10, seven suited or, you know, whatever the hand happens to be. Yeah, so I mean this one, again, it's a mixed strategy. We actually are taking the higher frequency play. Well, again, the, the opponents that you're typically playing against Yeah, okay, check. Yeah. So, yeah, and again, the opponents that you're playing against typically are calling pretty tight against four bets. So, it you know, it plays fairly straightforward. I mean, you, yeah, you're going to bluff equity-driven ranges, um, you know, but, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that it's not worth studying. I'm just saying that typically, again, the fact that the player three bet, already their range is fairly tight. So once they call the four bet, like they're definitely most, I didn't start getting called, like my four bets didn't start getting called by four or five suited until I was playing 400 no limit. So yeah, once you get to 400 no limit, players are going to defend closer to optimal. Um, but yeah, until then, it's, it's just one of those things where players are going to have tighter ranges than they should. And again, you can play your four bet pots, you can fire the flop pretty much, you know, freely and then after that oh what it wants me to check the turn okay well i guess i have the, the board kind of crushed at that point oh there is something to be said for like checking checking a decent amount of turns um on ace high boards like i i think sometimes you do are supposed to like check ace high turns although this one i don't think so Yeah, I guess that, I mean, so yeah, that's, I guess that could be possible. I, I wouldn't have actually expected that. I would expect people to be tighter, but I guess, like, it's this weird thing. Like, as the money gets really low and people don't care about the money as much, I think you'll see more crazy activity. And then as the money gets, you know, higher, you see more crazy activity closer to optimal. I'm surprised that you play five no limit and you're even worried about solver preflop ranges. That seems... It seems like to get past five no limit, 
Well, I don't know if anybody can get past 5 no limit because of the rake, but I guess it depends on where you play. Where you should play is on U Rounders Club. You have to pay play 20 no limit, but you pay a lot less in rake. Oops. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Thanks for uh, stopping by and chatting. Really? It wants me to fold here? That's kind of surprising. Huh. Okay. I guess. I can't figure out the 24 verse 14 on the turn. I do know I'm never... I do know I'm never folding kings on the turn to a raise, though. Eh, not 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 the best, not the worst there on the uh thirty-three percent uh C bet. Okay, let's uh ten oh eight. Alright. Anyone interested in getting a PP poker game going right now or um should we wait till this evening for that? I'm fine with either. Um I've I just had like I said, I just had two new players deposit last night, haven't gotten them quite set up yet, and then uh I've got like three other players that I've talked to recently about playing that um, hopefully I'll hear from, you know, get some word back today. Uh, da, da, da. We could do our defense against 60% CBOS, but honestly, like, I, we started pretty early. We've been going for an hour and 12 minutes. I, I'm going to call that good. I want to start my grind. Like, you know, like you can see, I had a pretty good session yesterday. So I'm excited to play. I think that was a pretty good warm-up. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Again, if you... Uh, want to see the replays of the streams you can go ahead and subscribe the youtube stuff and the the facebook stuff is going to be uh discontinued soon so those streams are not going to be live on facebook or on um youtube and uh, i'm also going to be deleting the youtube stream so the replays won't actually be available on youtube uh, i'm going to delete the youtube live streams i don't want those like messing up um you know kind of cluttering up my youtube channel so anyway if you guys are interested in playing on urounders club uh, we are going to have games going. Um, it is, you know, it is a struggle to get these games started, I have found. But uh, there's a lot of players that are very, you know, motivated to help me out and help me get games going. So I appreciate everyone who has uh, deposited, has money on the club. And again, I will continue to announce and advertise the games on the Rounder Universe or the um, the U Rounders Club on Facebook, which is at U Rounders Club, all one word, obviously. And then um, also in the Rounder University Discord, which you can find a link to below the stream. Uh, if you guys do want to play, again, the club ID is 507187. You can sign up. I also work with four other clubs. So if you guys are you know, interested in trying out PP Poker, but um, you don't want to you know, be awesome and support my uh, club and deal with you know, having to sort of organize games and play when players are available, I have four clubs that run games 24-7. Um, they run games from, uh, I have clubs that run games from 20 no limit up to 400 and 1k no limit. So whatever limit you're looking for, I can uh, get you into a club that has that. Uh, you just need to send in, you know, a deposit, get signed up in the Discord and everything else. And then we can get you up and running on the clubs. Uh, anyway, until then, I really do hope to see more of you guys on U-Rounders Club. I am, I am putting in a lot of effort, really trying to get those games running. They're going to be, as you can see on the tables, they are 30% VPIP and up. So uh, if you're a nitty player, this club is not the right place for you. If you are a fun, casual player, it is. 
that is the type of players that I want to attract. So if you, you know, if you want to play here, you got to learn how to play over 30% VPIP. Uh, I hope you guys understand why I'm doing that. And I think you most players would agree that that makes sense. That's going to make for much more entertaining games and uh, players are going to have a lot more fun on tables like that. All right. I will see you guys tomorrow morning, bright and early, 9 a.m. We'll do another study session. And uh, if I have time today, maybe I'll run uh, a sim. But I think for now, I'm going to keep just doing these drills uh, for another week or two. And um, then I'll be starting to make some custom drills. Again, if anybody is interested in coaching, a lot of the coaching that I'm going to do is going to involve making custom drills on Simple GTO Trainer. If you want to get a free trial of that, use the link in uh, the description or under the video. And uh, if after your trial, you enjoy it, you will get 10% off of your purchase if you use my link or code URounder at checkout, I believe. All right, guys, I will see you tomorrow. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for all the bit donations, the new subscriptions, and all the follows. Later.